Hi everyone, Mike here. If you run a small business or you have a sideline or a side hustle, chances are that these days you receive payments in multiple currencies. As an example, I have a friend who runs a small training business. His clients are spread across the world and when he receives a payment into his bank or PayPal account, it's often in the client's currency. So US dollars or Japanese yen or euros, for example. But being UK based, for tax reporting purposes, he needs to convert it to UK pounds. Excel has a couple of methods, both of which I've covered in previous videos for pulling in exchange rates. But those methods only give you the current exchange rate. In this video, I'm going to show you a way of loading historical currency rates into Excel. So whether you're an economist, a banker, a foreign currency trader, or a small or part-time business owner, if you're a Microsoft 365 user and need to do calculations using exchange rate data from the past, whether it be yesterday, last week, last year, you might benefit from watching this video. To do what I need to do, I'm going to use the stock history function. It's a fairly new function, which, as I said, is only available to 365 users. This is what my friend has used it for to calculate the UK pound payment based on the date, currency and the amount. And I'll return to this shortly. But first, I'll show you some examples of a more traditional use of the function. In this first example, I'm displaying the date, the share price at the start of the business day, the share price at the end of the business day and the number of shares sold on each day for Microsoft shares during May 2023. In the second example, I'm displaying the date and closing share price for the first two weeks of May, and here I've excluded the column headings. The third example relates to currency. It's showing the value of one US dollar in UK pounds for each day during January 2023. So how does all this relate to my friend? This is his spreadsheet. It's fairly self-explanatory. As you can see, on the 1st of May, he delivered a course. He'd agreed a fee with the client of $800, and the client paid him on the 31st of May. The formula in column G shows the value in UK pounds of $800 US on the 31st of May. This was calculated by multiplying 800 by the closing US dollar UK pound exchange rate on that day, which as you can see from this table was 80 pence. The table, by the way, is only there for cross-referencing purposes in this demo. In the real world, it wouldn't be needed. So how does stock history work? Well, in this example, stock history is going to be part of a formula in G3, where I calculate the exchange rate and multiply it by the value in column D. So I'll put equals D3 multiplied by stock history, open brackets. The first parameter in the stock history function is a string wrapped in double quotes. And that string normally would be the currency code that you're converting from, then a colon and the currency code that you're converting to. So it would be something like this, USD colon GBP. But in this case, the first part of the string is not fixed. The colon GBP is, but the first part is going to be pulled in from column E. So what I will do there is put E3 ampersand open double quotes colon GBP close double quotes. The second and third parameters are the start date and end date. In the previous example where I wanted to show exchange rates or share prices for a range of dates, I'd specify the start and end dates. But here, the start and end date are the same. The date the payment was received, and that's the date that's in column F. So I'll select F3 as the start date, 
and F3 is the end date. The fourth parameter is the interval, daily, weekly, or monthly. Because I want it to reference the exchange rate on the day specified as the start and end date, it has to be daily, which as you can see is a zero. The fifth parameter is header or no header. In the examples on the other sheet, the columns had headers. I didn't type those headers in. I specified one and it displayed them. But here, I don't want a header. I don't want it to show date. I don't want it to show close. So I'll type a zero. Finally, we need to specify which properties we want to display. For example, in the previous sheet with the Microsoft share price, I displayed the date and closing price. And then in the other example, I chose to display the date, the closing share price, the opening share price, and the number of shares traded. Each property has a numeric value. So it's a case of specifying the values separated by commas. But here, because I only want to specify the closing price, I enter a one. And that's it. Close the brackets, enter. And that has done a calculation which has taken the 800 and multiplied it by whatever the UK US dollar price was on the 31st of May 2023. So I will copy that formula down. Now, the error that's appeared in G12 is because the stock history function can't generate a value where the currency from and the currency to are the same. The 600 in D12 is 600 UK pounds. But I can fix this by wrapping the formula inside a simple if. So I'll just edit the formula. And at the beginning, I'll put if E3 equals GBP. Then just pick up the value from D3. If it's not, then do the formula. I'll need a closing bracket at the very end and enter it in and copy it down. So that's it. How to use stock history to record revenue generated in multiple currencies where the exchange rate can change on a daily basis. A bit of a niche use case for this video, but nevertheless, I hope you enjoyed watching it and learned something from it. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you'd like to keep up to date with what I'm up to, why not sign up to my weekly newsletter, which you can do at theexceltrainer.co.uk. But until the next time, have an excellent day.